Hello, I am Samuel and I am the saxophone soloist for the upcoming concert with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra, Night of the Saxophone. I am excited to play the alto saxophone concerto in E-flat major by Alexander Glazunov with the orchestra under maestro Hans Graf. As a saxophonist, performing with an orchestra as a soloist or as part of the orchestra is always a treasured opportunity because to this day, the saxophone has not been established as a standard orchestral instrument. To understand why this happened and to understand the significance of his concerto, let me give you a brief introduction on the history of the saxophone. Adolf Sax was a genius inventor whose first most important invention was the improvement in the bass clarinet design which he painted at the age of 24. Another of his inventions, the sax horn, also laid the groundwork for the modern day euphonium. But his most influential invention is the saxophone. It was invented by Adolf Sachs and was made to be a hybrid instrument that had the best characteristics of both a woodwind and brass instrument. Its ability to play technical passages easily like woodwind instruments, yet project loudly as brass instruments do, made it popular at that time. The saxophone had great initial success. Many bands and orchestras loved the sound of the saxophone, and even Hector Berlioz, acclaimed musicologist and composer, said, Composers will be very indebted to Mr. Sax when his new instruments are generally employed. If he perseveres, he will meet with the support of all friends of music. Today, military bands play a vital role in ceremonial parades, but traditionally, military bands mostly played for outdoor parades and served a very important role in boosting the morale of soldiers and civilians in the front line during wartime. Due to the nature of work, there was a need to find an instrument that was both durable and less susceptible to weather conditions. And this is where Adolf Sachs came in with his new inventions. Although he impressed the French war minister with his new instruments, the government had to be fair to all and organise the battle of bands between the traditional military band that existed in Paris at that time and a new band prominently featuring the instruments of Adolf Sachs. The battle of bands took place on 22nd April 1845 at the Champ du Mars, which is now the site of the Eiffel Tower, and was attended by 20,000 people. With his impressive instruments, Adolf Sachs won by a landslide and was awarded a contract that mandated the use of his instruments in the French military bands, giving him near monopoly over other instrument makers. While this was a great deal for Adolf Sachs, it exceeded jealousy and anger in his more established rival instrument manufacturing companies who attacked the legitimacy of his patents. He wasn't deterred and countered by withdrawing his patent application and giving other instrument makers permission to make a saxophone if they had the skill. They also schemed to undermine him financially and tried to assassinate him twice. And when all else failed, the rival manufacturing company and associated musicians collectively boycotted Mr. Sax's instruments and refused to let him play in the orchestra. The efforts to undermine sex undoubtedly affected the general perception of the saxophone. Through their constant operation and their strategies specifically designed to suppress the saxophone's introduction, sex's competitors created what amounted to a very successful negative ad campaign against this new instrument, one in which he was no match to defend. The silver lining in this sad story is that being the inventor of this instrument, he had to be the first teacher of it. He started the saxophone class at the Paris Conservatory in 1857, which at that time was also a school for military personnel who would go on to perform in the military bands. Unfortunately, 13 years later, in the defeat of France by Germany in the Franco-Prussian War, resulted in the abolishment of all military classes at the Paris Conservatory, including the saxophone. Even though Adolf Sachs offered to continue teaching the classes without pay, the government deemed the military section of the conservatory unnecessary. It took more than 70 years before the saxophone class in the Paris Conservatory restarted and was taught by Marcel Mew, then the soloist of the French Guard Republicans band. Given its history, the saxophone didn't have an extensive collection of original music, so Marcel Mew and his quartet resorted to playing transcriptions of music originally composed by Bach and Mozart. Their great artistry and virtuosic handling of the instrument prompted composers such as Alexander Glazunov to write new works for this foreign instrument, including a saxophone quartet. 
Present in the audience at the Paris premiere of the Glazunov Quartet was a young German saxophonist named Sigurd Rascher who fell in love with the work. Overflowing with excitement, he made it into the artist's rooms and asked that Glazunov hear him play. The next day, Rascher visited the composer in his house and the composer said, yes, play, and play he did. At the end of the session, Glazunov promised to write a concerto for him, saying, Ui, for such a musician, I will write one. And here lies the genesis of this concerto. The concerto is written in E-flat, in a single movement that can be split into multiple parts. The first begins with an exposition in E-flat, followed by a melodious adante in C-flat major, which leads to a cadenza. And the recapitulation begins after the cadenza with a compressed fugato in C minor, leading to a coda in E flat major. So my favourite part of the concerto is in the climax of the Adante section, which uses a really interesting harmonic progression, which is G sharp augmented, followed by a C sharp minor, to a E augmented, to a A minor, followed by a F minor, to a A flat, which then resolves to a D flat. And this is what it sounds like when I play it with the piano. So two very unique methods of practicing that I've picked up in Finland are mental practice and separated practice. I'm not sure if that's the actual term for it, but that's what I like to call it. So when you do mental practice, what it means is really reading through the score and practicing or rather visualizing yourself playing the work without your instrument. And that means really looking into the details of the score without your instruments. The second kind of practice that I've picked up is the idea of separating what your hands and what your mouth do, thus. And what that means is I practice the score um, separately. So what it would look like is this. And then join it together afterwards. In preparation for this performance, I've been rehearsing with the brilliant composer and pianist Jonathan Shin, who helps by playing the orchestral parts on the piano, which helps me familiarize myself with the music. I am excited to play a newly written cadenza that Jonathan Shin has written for me. I hope you enjoy this piece during the concert, and I hope to see you all there. Take care and stay safe.